we will end this um, lecture on shared memory by the optional unit where we define formally the notion of um, execution in shared memory and linearizability and sequential consistency. So what is linearizability? That is what we are trying to define now. First, every execution consists of a number of events. A read invocation event, which read invocation of a node by a node i on register x. A read response, which a response of with value a. The value a is a result of the read request by node i. We have similar write invocation where we want to start writing on register x the value a. So it's a write invocation by node i on register x of the value and a write response which is a response or confirmation to the write by node i. So the write response corresponds to termination huh, of this operation. And we also assume that each node executes one operation at a time. So every execution consists of read operations, which consists of these two events, read invocation and read response, and write operations, which is the write invocation and the write response. And again, we stress that we consider that each node executes one operation at a time. So each node does an invocation and waits until it gets a response. So let us define a sequential execution. An execution is sequential if each whatever read or write, we call it x inf, is immediately followed by a corresponding x response. And each response immediately follows an invocation. So each response immediately follows an invocation. So we in sequential execution, we are going to have invocation responses. So this is would be maybe another operation, y n followed by y response. So we do not we do not have concurrency. For example, a sequential execution will first we'll read the register x by p1 followed by writing the register y by p5 and so on. So this is reading of x and this is writing reading of x and this is writing of y. This is done by p1 and this is done by p5. So we'll have some assumptions on execution to make an execution what we call legal or well-formed. The first event of an execution is an invocation and any node alternates between invocation and responses, which just saying that each node executes sequentially. Now let us define what is an pending operation. So an operation is pending in an execution if O has no response. It means that you did an invocation of O, but there is no response in the execution. This is an execution. And otherwise, we say that the operation is complete. So we have the operation now can be either complete, which there, sometime there, there will be a response for this operation, or pending. So an execution now is complete, not only an operation, if every operation is complete. 
Otherwise, we call the execution is a partial execution. And operation X precedes operation Y in an execution. If, of course, the invocation of Y, the invocation of Y, comes after the response of X. So here is the inv of Y. It comes after the response of X. Then we say that this operation X precedes before Y. Linearizability. Now we try to define linearizability formally. So we will say that a complete execution, now we're talking about execution that in each, op each operation is complete, is linearizable if we can find another execution F such that first thing that E and F contain the same events the same events all responses or invocations are the same F is a sequential execution and in that sequential execution each operation follows its semantics it means that a read response have a value of preceding right invocation in F of the same register of course so it cannot read something else so the read response we are putting things in one line now the read response has to return the value of the last invocation of a right before it and it also obeys so-called time ordering time ordering says if an operation X precedes Y in the original execution E then this constraint is still satisfied in the sequential execution F so now let us complete linearizability by adding failure and we observe failure by having a pending operation operation that there is an invocation but there is no response in linearizability if an operation fails it is either observed by everybody or observed by none so first of all we do not have any failures in complete executions because every invocation has a corresponding response but we have failures in partial executions where you invoke an operation but you don't so a partial execution E is linearizable if E can be modified to F so we can modify E to F such that every pending operation is completed and it can be completed by either removing the invocation or adding the response of the operation by removing the invocation the effect of this failed operation is not observed by adding the, in the response the effect of this operation should be observed by everybody now we get F another execution and the next condition we have for linearizability is, a, is that F the one that we have completed now from the partial execution is also linearized that finishes the definition of linearizable executions. Now let us look to sequentially consistent executions. Okay. So sequential consistent executions do not observe a global order, as we will see now. So we are interested in observing the local order of execution on each node. So let us define what is an operation X locally precedes operation Y in E if X and Y occur in the same node that's clear and X is before Y in E that is clear so we say that X locally precedes Y so now let us look to sequential consistent execution E. An execution E is sequentially consistent if there exists an execution F with the following properties. We have this property before. 
similarity of events e and f contain the same events f is not concurrent it means f is a sequential execution the other things that we have as before all of these we have as before legal legal operations so basically in the sequential execution the value of the read response is reading the last value written but now we are not looking to the global order of events in E but just looking to the local time ordering so we say that uh, so we constrain only the execution on the local ordering of operations in each node so we say that if an operation locally precedes another operation if x locally precedes y in the original execution then x should locally precede y in the sequential execution we this is a formal definition of sequential consistency now we will conclude by looking what we have done until now what we have done until now is that we have been simulating a shared store. A shared store that only allows two operations, read and write, you can call it put and get. And now we know that our asynchronous model can simulate a shared memory, which says, so given an asynchronous system, we can simulate read write register shared memory okay what we observe that for this simulation to be fault tolerant a majority of correct node is needed so we can simulate a fault tolerant shared memory but a majority of correct node is needed in this system so the resilience should be less than half of the nodes in the system but that tells us one thing now that we can we know that is that if a problem P is solvable in the read write register, then it is also solvable in the asynchronous model. It's basically here is the problem, this is shared memory, this problem P is solvable here, then we can take this problem and then we simulate the shared memory. This is the simulation here on the top of the message in the asynchronous system and we solve this problem. So, so if your problem now is solvable with the write register, it is also solvable in the asynchronous model. Now let us look to the other question, which is we have a shared memory abstraction and we want to implement asynchronous model asynchronous message passing model okay so can we simulate the asynchronous model in a read write register the answer is yes we use one register a b for e every channel so modeling a directed channel from a to b so if we have a node a and a node b to model the communication this way, we use a single register, we call it AB. A will be the single writer to this register and B will be the single reader of this register. So the sender and receiver, both, the sender and receiver, so the receiver is the sender and receiver A and B, both keep track of the value of this register locally. So how we will do a sending of a message? We send the message by having the sender writing on, on this register, the current value of the register, which we kept locally, and also appending to it the message that we want to send. A receiver will Basically, pull the incoming channels, compare the value of the channel to the corresponding local variable it has, and if there is a change, then 
it can extract from that channel by reading it the last message so shared memory read write register can implement an asynchronous message passing system so shared memory and message passing are shared memory read write registers only are, and message passing are equivalent so we have the equivalence now between shared memory and asynchronous model so read write shared memory register and asynchronous models are equivalent so since we know before that consensus is impossible in the asynchronous model then it's also impossible to implement consensus using just read write shared memory all right so here's a summary of what we have done we have studied shared memory registers consistency of data in the presence of failure concurrency we studied a regular register as a starter then we studied atomic register both single reader and multiple reader we also addressed sequential consistency though we didn't describe an algorithm for implementing sequential consistency but it is possible to have an algorithm for sequential consistency where the right operations fault tolerant sequential consistency consistency with the right operation will take one round trip of messages and the read will take on the in the worst case two round trip of messages and these can be compared with the linearizable system where we always have two round trips for linearizable linear for linearizable registers we have two round trip for right okay, thank you